What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I wanna to talk to you about a fantastic budget option for a GPS watch. We're talking about the Garmin Forerunner 55. Before we get started, I just wanna let you know that I bought this watch with my own money. Nobody sent this to me for the purpose of review. I was just really interested to see what Garmin's entry-level running watch was all about. And over the last couple of weeks, I've had a really good chance to find out if this watch is worth the money, or is it worth spending a little bit more to get a few more features? Well, I started this video off by saying that this is a budget GPS watch so let's get started with price so in the US the Garmin Forerunner 55 retails for $199.99 in Europe it's $109.99 euros and in the UK it's $179.99 pounds but there are a few sales so definitely keep your eyes out I will place a link to this watch from Amazon in the show notes below in case you want to check it out let's jump right into some of the deets it has a 1.04 inch display with a 208 by 208 resolution it has chemically strengthened glass on the front now this is not Gorilla glass, it's not sapphire glass, it's chemically strengthened glass. I don't know what that means, but in the last couple of weeks, I have not scratched the lens. The bezel and the case are both made of plastic. I'm sure there is some fancy way of actually calling this what it is, like a strengthened, reinforced polymer, but it really just looks and feels like plastic. And that's not to take away from the watch. I think the watch really does look sharp, but in this price point, we can't expect stainless steel or a titanium bezel or case. Now, one of the things that I both like and dislike about the plastic bezel and the plastic case is that it's firmly entrenched as a sports watch. You can't pull double duty and wear this going out as something that looks smart. The 455 does have a 20 millimeter removable band. 20 millimeters is an industry standard and you can buy other bands from Garmin or you could go on Amazon and buy as many bands as you could possibly think of in every different material and color. It is 42 by 42 by 11.6. Now 42 is a pretty small watch and you can see right here that this is how it looks on my 170 millimeter wrist. Because I'm used to wearing slightly bigger watches I actually think this looks just a little too small for my wrist. But of course keep in mind that I am six feet seven I weigh 190 pounds so I usually need just a little bigger watch to kind of balance me out to look normal. The 455 weighs in at a staggeringly light 37 grams. When this thing is on my wrist, I don't feel it. I don't know it's there. It connects to everything you have via Bluetooth or AMP Plus, so you can connect it to all your external sensors, be that an external heart rate monitor or a power meter, a foot pod, you name it, you can connect it to the 455. It connects to GPS, Galileo, and GLONASS. It is water resistant to 50 meters, which is pretty good because there are lots of swim workouts you can do with this watch. Most importantly, this is what people are gonna be looking at when they are looking at a GPS watch of any kind, be it a budget or top of the line, and that's battery life. 455 will last you 14 days in watch mode. And watch mode does include monitoring your heart rate all the time. It's going to monitor your sleep. You're gonna be able to stream music from your phone. What that doesn't include is actual GPS time. So if you just wanted to use it as a watch, you can, and it'll last up to two weeks. Now, when it comes to using the GPS, you get up to 20 hours in GPS mode. It's not bad. It's not the best in the market, but 20 hours is respectable. And that means for most of us, with everything else going on, if we wear this as our, as our daily driver, let's say we go out for an hour a day to do GPS activities, plus everything else that we're using the watch for, I have found that I am charging this watch about once a week. Oh, and if you like this video, if you like hearing about the Forerunner 55, if you like running in general and running tech, please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me and helps the channel. And if you're not already subscribed, consider doing so. The 455 does not have a barometric altimeter, which means that it's not going to measure power. You are not going to get wrist-based power. But if you do have a foot pod, like the stride pod that I use, you can pair that to that and you can get your power data that way. The 455 does have an optical heart rate monitor. It is Garmin's Elevate V3. The heart rate monitor has been pretty fantastic. As far as wrist based optical heart rate monitors go. This is one of the better ones that I've tested. In this experiment, I have compared it with my Polar Grit X Pro, and the Polar Grit X Pro is paired with the Polar H10 heart rate monitor. That is the gold standard. This is a recent run that I did. You can kind of see some heart rate drift coming across here. It's slowly creeping upwards. Let me just highlight this section right here because we've got some interesting data in this section. This is where I stopped and I talked to a runner and you can see where the heart rate kind of dropped right there. And after that, I decided I was gonna run some intervals. Now these are two minute intervals with one minute recovery in between. Look at this, this is actually pretty impressive. The Garmin Forerunner 55 is pretty much mirroring the Grit X Pro with the H10 heart rate monitor strap. It looks like 
The Polar Grid X Pro is just a second or two quicker at responding to my heart rate than the optical sensor. This is pretty epic. This graph right here is high praise for the Forerunner 55 as far as the Elevate V3 heart rate monitor. So I want you to take a look at this GPS tracking data on the map right now. Now we can see these are all pretty close together right around here. I mean, this, this looks pretty good. Right here is very heavy tree canopy. So I am very impressed with how these stay together. And just so you know, watching this, the Forerunner 55 is orange. So we can see it is right in line with the other two watches that I'm using. Then we come around here and it looks like this red one comes a little wide, but the blue and the orange, they stay right on the sidewalk and that's where I was running that day. Let's just zoom in a little closer to that same area and we can see Whoa, that cluster is absolutely brilliant coming through the trees, which actually, that makes me feel pretty good about the Forerunner 55 because it means it's picking up the GPS satellites even though there is a lot of canopy cover. And as we come around here, we can see that the blue and the orange, remember the orange is the Forerunner 55, that is staying right on the sidewalk, right where we wanna see it. It looks like the red, I don't know what happened there. I'm like running down the middle of the road, which I definitely wasn't in this situation. Now this brings up a very good point about the 455 because it has a lot of activities that you can use on this watch. Running, treadmill running, virtual running, swimming, pool swimming, open water swimming, you know, it has all the fitness activities that you would normally like to do. What it doesn't have is trail running. Now, the reason that is a problem is because if you are running on trails, you are not gonna be running with the same efficiency that you do on the road. So if you just set run and then you go running on the trails and it's roots and there's ups and downs, that is going to mess with your long-term data. That's why I think every watch needs to have a trail running feature just to keep all those numbers, all the metrics that we love to track, make sure it keeps them in check. Now, a very important thing to mention is that this does not have a triathlon mode. It does not have a multi-sport mode. If you are a triathlete, I'm sorry, but this watch is not for you. There are a lot of other options out there that you are gonna find a lot better, but I think that is a hole that Garmin can probably address in the future possibly with just a firmware update. I know they do offer triathlon profiles on their more expensive watches, but Garmin, if you're watching, there are other watches in the same price point that do offer a triathlon activity mode. Okay, before we get too far away from that GPS tracking data, I do just wanna put some data up on your screen right now of the three watches that I was using to compare against the Forerunner 55. We have the Forerunner 55 clocked on this run, 13.24 miles. The Chorus Pace 2 clocked in at 13.34 miles and the Polar Grit X Pro logged 13.36 miles. So obviously the Polar Grit X Pro and the Chorus Pace 2, they are the closest. Now the Garmin Forerunner 55 that's, that's a little off. I think that's acceptable, right? It's not too far different. But let's just look at another run right now. With the Garmin 4Runner 55 clocked in at 11.02 miles, the Pace 2 clocked in at 11.02 miles also, and the Polar Grid X Pro logged 11.09 miles. In this instance, the 4Runner 55 is exactly the same as the Chorus Pace 2, and just a couple of hundredths less than the Grit X Pro. The 4Runner 55 does have a five button configuration. We have three buttons on the left, we have two on the right. Now the Garmin 4 and a 55 does connect to your phone, so you can control music on your phone through your watch. Now it doesn't hold music on the actual watch, so you still have to bring your phone with you in order to access these features. But if you press and hold the lower left-hand button, it accesses the music on your phone, then you can skip tracks, you can play, you can pause and do all of that. One of the newest features that I really like on Garmin is the widget snapshots. And when you press the lower button, you can access these widget snapshots, and then you can just scroll through to see a whole host of information. Now, if there was something you wanted to dig deeper into, you can just press the top right button and you can get into it. Let's just dig a little deeper into my VO2 Max so we can actually open this up and show you guys what we are looking at. So if we press this top right hand button, which is the enter button, it's the start stop button, we're going to see that this watch is measuring my VO2 Max currently at 56. If we scroll down, this is your race predictor. This is where it's taking all the data and it's giving you an estimate of what you could achieve with different distances. Some of you may be looking at these numbers and thinking, Matt, listen, I, I know you can run a little faster than this. Why isn't the watch accurately predicting? I have only had this watch for a couple of weeks. It takes time to learn about all the different speeds that you can run at different heart rates. So in the last couple of weeks, I have mostly been running very easy. Another feature I really like, and I think a lot of people like, because it just tells you more information about you 
you the wearer, is the body battery. And when you sleep, that battery gets charged up. And when you're out running around, the battery decreases. And this watch tracks the body battery. So we're gonna go down to the widget menu. We are gonna scroll down until we see body battery. And here we go, we've got a plus of 42, minus 31, and that has been my range. And it should increase nicely until tomorrow morning when I get up and I start it all over again and I take this watch out for a run. Now, another feature that I really like, and I think this is pretty important, is the safety and tracking feature. So if we press and hold the upper left-hand button, it's gonna bring us into this menu. And right here, I've already got it highlighted. We're on the assistance. Now, this is a good point to remind you that this watch is connected to your phone. So this feature will not work unless it is connected to your phone. But let's say your phone is tucked away and you can't get to it and you need to send a message for help. You want someone to know where you are. Perhaps you want them to come and pick you up. If you select the assistance, you can either go through your contacts, which are in your Garmin Connect, or you can input a contact. If I send this, it says it's an emergency. Please get help. Not an emergency, but please pick me up or I need help follow to my location. And when you access that, it sends the person a text message and or an email, depending on how you've set it up in the app. And on your screen right now is the email that Harmony received when I triggered this warning. After you've triggered it, you can also cancel it. And once you cancel it, it sends another email or another text message just saying that you're okay and no further action is required. The 455 does have track mode. Track mode is an absolutely fantastic feature for a watch of this price to have. And what it does, you know how when you run around a track, the ovals are just all over the place. That first lap, the watch learns the track. And you have already set this up ahead of time, telling the watch which lane you are gonna be running in. And then each subsequent lap that you do, the watch knows that you are running the same lap as the first test lap and it snaps it all together so you have a beautiful picture and an accurate track run. The Garmin 455 does have Garmin Coach, which means it takes the guesswork out of training for a distance. You can train for a five, 10, half marathon. The workouts are already set up for you in the app and then you just send them to the watch and the watch will remind you what days to do which workouts. Pace Pro lets you put in the distance of your race. And when you put the distance in and you put your finish time in, Pace Pro will tell you how to pace your runs and it lets you change your strategy of your race. So if you want to run even splits all the way through through, it can let you do that. If you want to run a slight negative split, it will let you do that. The feature is absolutely fantastic and it really takes the guesswork out of pacing, which is what we want from a GPS fitness device. Of course, the 455 is a full-on fitness device. It's going to track your steps. It's going to track your breathing. It's going to track your stress. Women, it can track your menstrual cycle and it can track your pregnancy. Now, I wanted to show you guys how that works, but because I've got this set up as a male, it doesn't let me do that. So who is the Garmin 4Runner 55 ideally for? Well, let me just put this out there, that I think this watch could be for most athletes. It doesn't have a lot of the high-end features, but guys, honestly, let me know in the comments if you agree with this, but a lot of the features on these very high-end sport watches are features that are nice to have, but that we will never use. If you are looking to upgrade from a less expensive or an older GPS watch, I think the 455 is really going to hit the nail on the head. If you don't need triathlon features, so if you don't need multi-sport features, the 455 is one to consider. I kind of think it has everything necessary for a GPS watch without any of the fluff. And of course, if you are already in the Garmin ecosystem, I think it's even more of a best buy because you're already used to how the app works, the IQ store works. Now, if you're coming from another brand, maybe a different story. There are some other competitors out there and over the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna be digging into a few of those. Guys, let me know what you think of this watch. Have you run with a Garmin 4 and a 55? Are you thinking about getting it? Let me know in the comments. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.